Welcome, friends, to uh, this latest episode of India in the World uh, in our YouTube channel, The Nationalist View. And we have with us today uh, Shri N.C. Bipindraji. Uh, Bipindraji, welcome to the show. And uh, we are going to talk about there are a lot of things which are happening in our neighboring uh, country, Bangladesh. Yeah. And uh, so we are going to talk about that. And uh, we have with us Bipindraji. Bipindraji is a veteran journalist. Uh, Bipindraji has worked in Bloomberg for uh, quite some time and he is also the founder of a uh, think tank uh, called Law and Society Alliance. And uh, he has been writing uh, extensively in uh, both national and international newspapers, magazines and journals on international relations and especially the uh, India and its uh, neighborhood. So Bipindraji, uh, welcome once again to the show and I'll start with uh, this thing. There's been a lot of violence in Bangladesh. And uh, uh, it has been making headlines. So uh, what exactly is happening uh, in Bangladesh? Why there is so, uh, so much of violence, anarchy and chaos? So what exactly is the situation? Well, Namaskar, Aruna Nanji. It's a pleasure being on uh, your National View podcast. It's a, it's a really wonderful effort that you're making. And I congratulate you on that. Uh, to answer your question, sir, uh, uh, in fact, if you see, uh, Bangladesh has been facing a bit of a destabilization in the last couple, few years now, uh, primarily because uh, uh, there are powers, external powers, which are currently working on Bangladesh to ensure that it uh, destabilizes and there is some anarchy within the country, primarily for a couple of reasons. One is essentially because... Uh, uh, there are some Western forces who find Bangladesh's uh, closeness with India and China a bit uncomfortable uh, for their uh, own interests in this region, number one. Number two, there are also, uh, since the Prime Minister of uh, Bangladesh, current Prime Minister Sheikh Asina, is uh, very close to the Indian government uh, or India in particular, in the recent uh, years. This is her fourth term as Prime Minister. And she has always been a pro-India uh, politician in Bangladesh. So that is again a matter of discomfort for uh, uh, nations up, which are inimical to India, both Pakistan and uh, China in particular. Uh, so these are uh, forces which are already working. There are already a lot of, uh, what do you call it as, uh, subversive forces which are working within Bangladesh and uh, the external forces are making use of these subversive forces to create uh, so much of anarchy and chaos uh, within Bangladesh. And uh, if you look at the internal subversive forces, particularly you will find that uh, pro-Pakistan elements and uh, hardcore Islamist forces, they, they are actually now combining together to uh, ensure that uh, the Sheikh Hasina government, which got elected in January uh, this year, earlier this year, with no opposition inside, because the main opposition party, Bangladesh National Party of uh, Kalida Zia, who is again uh, the widow of uh, former uh, you know, military general who did a coup in 1977, uh, General Zia Ul Rahman, Zia Ul Rahman's widow. Uh, her party is essentially doesn't want uh, Sheikh Hasina's government to continue and they boycotted that uh, election saying that they won't. And I believe Sheikh Hasina is daughter of Mujibur Rahman. Sheikh Hasina is daughter of Mujibur Rahman. Mujibur Rahman who, uh, and who, who liberated the first, Bangladesh. Yeah. yeah, who was the first president of Bangladesh, liberated Bangladesh in 1971. It's a power and, struggle uh, between daughter of a democrat and daughter of a dictator. Widow of a dictator. Oh, sorry, widow of a dictator. Widow of a dictator. And uh, essentially, uh, the coup was conducted in 1975. And uh, during that, uh, you know, just before the coup, uh, you, uh, you, I mean, uh, during the coup, actually, it was done by some military officers of Bangladesh. And uh, Mujibur Rahman was, uh, was assassinated along with a lot of his family members. Only two members of his family survived, which is Sheikh Asina and her sister who were at that time traveling in Germany. So they survived because of that. So and then later, they, India gave them a lot of protection and all that. And then uh, they are since uh, those historical reasons, 
they are very close. Even Mujibur Rahman was very close to India. Uh, India supported the liberation movement and also militarily we supported in the 1971 war and because of Bangladesh got created, which is history and I think all of us know about the 1971 war. So uh, this is essentially a battle between, as you rightly pointed out, the daughter of a assassinated uh, uh, liberation leader uh, and uh, 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 gen military dictator's widow. So that is the battle. But that is a very, uh, what do you call it, as a uh, minor element in this entire geopolitics that is being played over Bangladesh. And there are uh, situations that have been created, created both political and economic within Bangladesh to destabilize the nation. So much so that uh, it becomes a headache for India. So because uh, India's is neighborhood first policy and Sheikh Hasina being close to India, this is a matter of discomfort uh, for forces which are actually anti-India. So these are the reasons. And of course, there are major powers that are uh, having play in Bangladesh, uh, such as the United States, which played a very negative role in the January 2024 elections in Bangladesh, uh, where they attacked the Sheikh Hasina's government. Uh, you know, they talked about the downslide of democracy there or the, uh, you know, dictatorship of Sheikh Hasina and all those, uh, you know, language was used by the U.S., uh, government at that time. So, US, China, Pakistan, these are the players which have a uh, game in, in Bangladesh at this point to weaken India's, uh, you know, strengthening relations with the Bangladeshis. And they are trying to use all local issues uh, to create this kind of a uh, protest. And the latest protest that is happening, just to give a background to your audience, uh, is essentially happening over reservations in government jobs in Bangladesh. Uh, essentially, after the 1971 uh, liberation war, uh, in 1972, Mujibur Rahman, uh, as president, uh, is the government under him. Uh, they, uh, you know, uh, his prime minister was uh, Tejuddin Ahmed. That administration brought a reservation policy where, uh, you know, almost 30% of the government jobs uh, you know, were reserved for uh, people who participated in the, in the liberation movement in Bangladesh in 1971 and their descendants and families. That was the essential thing. But what had happened was uh, there were protests against this reservation over a long period of time uh, by forces which are within Bangladesh, which are close to Pakistan. Because uh, we should understand that when the liberation movement for Bangladesh happened within Bangladesh, there were forces, political forces, uh, and religious forces, which were actually close to Pakistan also. So that protest has been going on. In 2018, Sheikh Hasina had uh, abolished this quota system. But uh, one of the uh, organizations representing the families of the liberation movement leaders, they filed a petition in the High Court in Bangladesh, which actually reinstated the quota. And again, the protest started. And then due to the protest, the Supreme Court had recently, I think a couple of weeks back, they have stayed that, uh, that reinstatement order by the High Court. So this is the background behind it. And the protest is happening essentially triggered by the students' uh, movement uh, there. And there is a clash between the Sheikh Hasina Party's student movement, which is Bangladesh Chatra uh, League, against the Bangladesh National Party, which is... Uh, uh, you know, uh, Khalida Ziaz's party's student organization, and also uh, creating confusion and uh, more trouble for Bangladesh government is the Jamaat e Islami, which is a very pro Pakistan Jamaat e Islami. Bangladesh, I, I wanted very... to come to this thing. What is the role of Jamaat e Islami in uh, this whole episode? Jamaat e Islami. Just a pretext, is it just a pretext as basically they are using reservation as a pretext to create, you know, more anarchy, more violence? Uh, yeah, absolutely. See, this is a, I mean, reservation, as you know, is a very major issue in South Asia. Essentially, you know, the kind of sentiments, both pro and against the, uh, that it uh, triggers in, in the entire South Asian region, including India. I mean, we, we all have uh, seen that, uh, you know, several protests, Mandal Commission protests and all that, pro and against. So both are happening. So this is one, uh, you know, just to understand, it is not only about uh, the freedom fighters. 
liberation fighters. The quota is also for the backward communities and a se segment of minority communities in uh, uh, Bangladesh and also persons with disabilities. So it's it's a, essentially a package of uh, quotas. So when we say minorities, it is prima primarily Hindus. Is there a Buddhist? Uh, primarily Hindus, you can say, constitute this. Hindus, Buddhists are there. Few other uh, tribal communities are there. They don't practice Islam. They practice their, uh, you know, tribal religions and all that. So they are also there in Bangladesh. So this quota is for them, essentially to uh, help them uh, get better uh, economic status and all that. So, however, the Supreme Court uh, uh, ruling, which was recently given. It said that 93% should be in the open quota. There should be no reservation. You can have only 5% backward classes reservation, minority reservation, and 1%, uh, sorry, 2% for the uh, people with disabilities. So 7% alone is allowed. Uh, they, they have uh, done this. Essentially, this uh, protest is happening uh, over, again, you have heard these terminologies even in India, constitutional upholding of the constitution. So <laughs> constitution breakdown. So these kind of terminologies are being used currently during the protest because under the Bangladeshi constitutions, article uh, 29, it deals with equality of all before the eyes of the law. So that is, that is uh, equality is one of the uh, principles under article 21, uh, sorry, 29 of the Bangladeshi constitution. There are several provisions in that. One, two, three, four. Uh, so, which deals with the equality of uh, all before the law, equality, or some uh, what is, concessions for uh, backward communities and persons with disabilities. So, these are dealt with in Article 21. So, it is essentially uh, uh, they are pressing for that provision to be upheld, the protesters. So, uh, there are two, three diamonds to it. One is social, the other is uh, political. And the third one is geopolitical. So these are three factors which are contributing to the, uh, you know, protests and uh, uh, you know, disruption that is happening within Bangladesh at this point in time. So you have you know, explained it very well and very lucidly. Uh, one um, uh, important thing is that okay, Bangladesh is close to India, so that is one reason you know that uh, as you have explained that uh, U.S., China, Pakistan, so they are trying to. Uh, destabilize the current government and uh, so that the relationship between India and Bangladesh so uh, that should you know uh, that will get affected by it. but is Bangladesh why why Bangladesh apart from the relationship with India is there any other geostrategic it's uh, you know uh, the geographical positioning or is there any other reason that Bangladesh uh, is considered to be uh, important by these parts so why why they they have so much of interest in you know like sri lanka they have sri lanka has you know uh, hamman dota port and there are other and its geo strategic positioning is such that you know it becomes very significant so uh, for our you know uh, viewers i just want to ask you and for uh, my own knowledge also that is there something else that which makes bangladesh uh, important in the uh, eyes of these powers and that is why this power play is going Yes, Bangladesh is a very important uh, player in the entire scheme of things as far as uh, this uh, South Asian and Southeast Asian region is concerned. Though Bangladesh is essentially a South Asian nation, it has a connect with Southeast Asia. It has uh, you know, borders with Southeast Asia. And the, I mean, if you put the world map upside down, if you look at that entire uh, Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean region, so you will find where Bangladesh sits. India has a very uh, uh, predominant position in that uh, in that entire uh, geography. I mean, just put it upside down and look at the Indian Ocean region space. So Bangladesh is sitting in a very vital spot where uh, and uh, you know, it, it, moreover it is also the second largest Muslim nation in the region uh, in South Asia. So that is another factor. So but the third factor is uh, uh, you know, uh, economics. And the maritime uh, uh, opportunities that Bangladesh brings for any geopolitical power that operates wants to operate in 
both the South Asian region and the South Southeast Asian region. Okay, so it, it's 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 a, it's a combination of all these uh, three factors which is contributing to the importance of Bangladesh in the, in the entire scheme of things, and also because uh, Bangladesh is an important ally of India. Please, we should. Uh, I mean, it's 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 a no brainer actually. So. Uh, uh, since Bangladesh is a very important uh, Muslim nation, which is a uh, ally of India, so that actually uh, doesn't work out well for uh, for Pakistan or China or even the US for that matter. See, uh, you know, the strategic ally, the US, the strategic ally doesn't want India to be strategically strong. Let us remember that. So. Uh, if they want India to play a second fiddle to their their own geopolitical game plan. So Bangladesh is a very important factor too. It's a lever that uh, all these uh, three uh, nations, US, uh, uh, Pakistan and China, use against India. Let us remember that. And even Bangladesh should, should understand that. So Bangladesh is uh, both its uh, birth and its uh, present and its future uh, is secure only when it is uh, you know hand in hand with india and not with any other power in, in, uh, in geopolitically speaking or even economically speaking because we are closely linked uh, you know a lot of people don't understand or uh, uh, know about this or maybe only a few environmentalists know about it bangladesh is going under the sea water very fast okay in another say 50 years there won't be any bangladesh because the sea water erosion uh, is happening in a very rapid pace and uh, people are being uh, thrown out of their homes because of this uh, sea water occupying the land. And uh, the, where will the migration happen? They cannot go and fall into the sea, right? So they will have to come uh, towards their west, which is India. So India is going to bear the entire, uh, you know, it's, it's a big crisis. You know? It's a big humanitarian crisis. It's a big environmental crisis. So the entire Bangladesh population is going to move into India, which is already happening. We have been talking about this Bangladeshi illegal uh, you know, migration that is happening into India, infiltration that is happening. So it is going to be a major, major uh, you know, uh, factor for India as well. Uh, that is precisely why it is very important in the geopolitical context. One last thing I wanted to ask so far, uh, how do you uh, analyze India's response to this whole situation? Uh, not only the immediate situation, but there have been like uh, when earlier this year elections were held in Bangladesh. So India had uh, kind of ratified the elections and they had backed uh, Sheikh Hasina. Uh, but um, in uh, so far, you know, there seems to be a lot of uh, a quietness on uh, this uh, Bangladeshi uh, front as far as Indian Ministry of External Affairs is concerned. Though recently, uh, the West Bengal Chief Minister so she had given a statement regarding giving shelter to people who will come from Bangladesh. And that has kind of basically uh, turned into a, a small diplomatic embarrassment uh, for India. So, but that's a different story that has, uh, that's internal dynamics of Indian policy. But so far, how do you judge India's uh, response to uh, this whole situation which is developing there? Is India doing enough? Does India need to do more? So... Uh, or uh, and are our, uh, whether our uh, efforts are in the right direction or not, do we need to take a different direction? So how do you analyze this? So uh, see, India's response to this entire crisis that is going on in Bangladesh has been quite matured, I would call it. Because uh, in the overt front, India has stated, the spokesperson of the NBA in the last uh, weekly briefing, you know, real correctly pointed out that it's an internal matter of Bangladesh, so they will handle it. But India is keeping a close watch on what is happening there. So that is a very mature overt response that is happening. But there is another side to it also. India is not going to be sitting quiet when uh, when there are global forces which are working against India and uh, turning in Bangladeshi uh, population uh, against India. You know, we have seen this... Uh, effort, the India Out campaign, which we saw in Maldives, a similar campaign was attempted even in Bangladesh in the recent times. So any anti-India campaign or anti-India machinations that uh, these powers which are inimical to India do in Bangladesh, India is not going to sit quiet. 
Okay, there are court uh, watch that they are keeping. They know how to handle the situation. And, uh, uh, you know, these are things, covert things cannot be discussed in the open. And, of course, India is not discussing it in the open also. And I'm definitely, uh, I'm sure of it, that India and uh, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government and Prime Minister Asina's government are closely talking to each other and working. That is also one of the accusations against Asina that she's a puppet of the Indian uh, government. So that is that apart, I'm definite that the two sides are talking to each other. They are coordinating some efforts to contain this, uh, this anti-India campaign. And this particular protest, current protest, has not turned anti-India, but there is all possibility that it could turn anti-India. So India is kind of keeping a close watch and also maybe doing a lot of things underhand without being open about it. Okay, so that is a given. We should we should take it uh, at face value that this is happening. So uh, see, one more thing that that happened, which I want to you know point out here with regard to uh, the protests that were happening. So the protests got uh, you know uh, expanded in a massive manner when uh, Sheikh Azina mentioned uh, the word Rasakars against the protesters. Okay. The Razakars in Bangladesh is a derogatory term used for people who were pro-Pakistan in the 1971 uh, liberation uh, movement. Okay. So, jamaat e islami uh, and all these people. So, Razakar, okay. basically for our, uh, you know, viewers, I would uh, add to what uh, Bibindraji is saying. It's like, basically, you can say uh, an armed militia. Basically, which was, you know... Yeah, I mean, armed militia is a later uh, development of that term. Yeah. Razakar actually means volunteer. Hmm. Okay. So, in... in because Urdu, during Hyderabad liberation movement also... Correct. The, the, we, have, we use the word Razakar largely yeah. to denote, you know, that armed militia of the Nawab of Hyderabad uh, who was uh, committing atrocities on Hindus. Yeah. So Razakar in yeah. Urdu means. So we'll come back to we'll come back to this thing. So when she used the term Razakar, yeah, and please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, it, this is a very interesting background. Actually, you rightly pointed out. I was actually about to tell you about the Hyderabad. Uh, you know, uh, India uh, after the independence, uh, Sardar Patel, Vallabhai Patel uh, made a lot of effort to integrate a lot of princely states into the Indian uh, Union. So Hyderabad was one of the princely states, Muslim ruled states, which they did not uh, want to join. Or even if the Nizam wanted, there were a lot of forces uh, which were called the All India Majlise uh, Itihad Muslim, mm -hmm. AIMIM, which is currently represented by Asaduddin Owaisi, who is the MP from Hyderabad. They did not want. Uh, these people to join and they wanted either to be uh, freedom free of the Indian Union or join in Pakistan. So that is why there is a commonality between the Rasakar term both in India and in uh, and it is a militia. You are absolutely right. It's a it's a it's a it's a militia group. It's a paramilitary militia group that was founded by the AIMIM's founders in 1938. Okay, this idea was borrowed from Hyderabad by Bangladeshi. Uh, people, the people who are pro-Pakistan in Bangladesh. So that is the connect between this, these two. So this is a very interesting uh, side show that you can talk what is happening in the, in the Bangladesh at this point in time. So, uh, so there is a you know commonality of uh, interest both for India and Bangladesh to ensure that uh, the current protests are you know uh, are subsiding very fast. And it uh, vanishes entirely, and probably uh, both India and Bangladesh present governments are working together to ensure that this happens as quickly as possible. So uh, we'll end our discussion here for today, and thank you so much, Vivindraji, for explaining so lucidly. I think it was a wonderful conversation we had. I think this is one of the best episodes we have done so far with you, and uh, not only so, so far with you, but also on the India and the world, uh, you know, under this series. So uh, we'll be back soon with, uh, you know, uh, another episode and uh, we'll talk about the latest developments in uh, the global arena. 
and uh, we hope to have Vipin ji also back very soon with us on uh, another topic. And uh, for our viewers, if you want to ask any question from Vipin ji you can post this question. You can put these questions in the comment box, and uh, we'll take the, these questions to Vipin ji and try to get answers for them. And if you have liked this episode, if you have liked this video, please do share, subscribe to the channel, and like this video, and uh, press the bell icon, and you'll get the notifications for all the new videos which we are posting on this YouTube channel. And thank you uh, very much once again, uh, Vipindri, for being with us. And thank you, viewers, for watching this. And we'll be back soon. So, uh, namaste.